Hey, winners, remember, we're all about discipling one another to reach and raise the next generation to live out God's truth. Yes. You've been teaching the values. This Sunday, you're teaching the second set of values. Remember what those last two are? They are the uh, blessing of generous living, and the last one is the priority of reaching people. Hey, I want to talk to you about the priority of reaching people for just a minute. Um, I want to talk to you about this idea of what do we do when sinners show up. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, if we really start reaching people in the community that don't know Jesus, I'm not talking about church people that are coming from another church, they're disgruntled and checking out your Bible fellowship class. I'm not talking about somebody that moved in, that was in another town, that loved church, and they're checking out your Bible fellowship class. I'm talking about when people that are genuine sinners. You remember in the Bible they would say, you know, Jesus was, uh, he was kind of a friend of sinners, and it was this whole category of people. When I'm talking about sinners, I'm talking about people whose life is categorized by something the Bible clearly says is immoral or wrong. So when those people start showing up in your class, when people that have uh, lifestyles that are completely immoral and they don't really know a whole lot about Jesus, they're just checking it out. When they start showing up, because here's the truth, if we're serious about reaching people, they're going to start showing up. What do we do? How do we treat them? I'm talking about people that... Uh, Maybe they're uh, living in a homosexual lifestyle, and they're open with that. Maybe two girls, two ladies come to your class one day, or two men come to your class one day, or uh, you know somebody that maybe just looks uh, like they're living in the world that uh, you know has certain certain body piercings or certain things on their body that would say, "Wow, this person's very different," or or maybe they just dress in such a way that uh, it lets you know that they are not a Christian. What do we do when these people come to your class? Because here's what I want you to know. The priority of reaching people is one of our values. That means we want them to come to our class. Now, this should cause you a little bit of, whoa, maybe I've never thought about that. Well, I want you to think about it today. I want you to help your class be ready when people come in that need to know Jesus. Because remember, we are not a country club for saved people. We are a hospital for people that need to know Jesus. Let me, let me start off with this text in uh, Luke chapter 15. It says this, in verse 2, it says, Both the Pharisees and the scribes began grumbling. Here's what they were talking about Jesus. They said, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Then he told this parable, saying, and what, Who among you has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture to go find the one which is lost until he finds it? So Jesus was known by those people he was around as a guy who was friend, a friend of sinners. Now, most of us that grew up in a church setting, in a church world, sinners kind of make us nervous. I mean, you know, real sinners, people that, that talk differently, people that have uh, foul language or have a lifestyle that is, is just uh, completely away from God. Well, we want them to come to our class. So how do we respond? Well, here's, here's some things I want to tell you that might help you when these folks come to your class. And again, let me say this. Be ready for them to come to your class. We want them to come to your class. We want them to experience the joy of authentic community and the power of God's Word. So here's a few things. First of all, be kind. No, really, be kind. When they come in your class, don't be like, oh, look who's here. Or, or don't, set, don't, don't not make a place for them. Get out of your seat. Go welcome them. Hey, we're so glad you're here. Come sit by me. And not just a superficial kind, but real kind. Be kind. Secondly, don't be shocked. Remember when John 4, uh, there was this woman at the well, and, and Jesus was talking to her, and, and he said, look, look, I know that the man you're living with now is not your husband. You've had five husbands. He wasn't shocked by her scandalous sin because here's the absolute truth. All of us, our hearts are wicked. And so don't be shocked by their sin. But here, be ready. Be ready. Know that people might sin a little different than you and understand that their lives might be wrecked with sin. and They need Jesus, but they don't know they need Jesus yet. So you need to just be uh, not be shocked and not come off in a way that makes them feel like they're some kind of three-headed monster. Okay? So don't be shocked. Be ready. Number three, be interested actually be interested in their lives, like genuinely interested. Do you understand this, that just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean you have to be unkind to them? Just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean you have to necessarily dislike them? Because remember, when you look into people's eyes, you can see the image of God in them, that God's image is in them and God loves them. So, so genuinely be interested in their life. Find some common ground. I remember when I was in Bible college, they taught us this uh, little acronym that helped you start a conversation with anybody. It was FIRE. And it was just family, interest, religion, and then uh, the message. It's actually firm. Family, interest, religion, message. That kind of helps sometimes when, you, uh, when you're wanting to just know how to talk to people. Ask them about their family. Ask them about what they're interested in. So be interested. Number four. Don't be 
weird. You know what this means? Just, just don't be weird. You know, these people are different. Every time you're around somebody that's different, you, you have a natural ability to just kind of almost be fearful or uh, think somehow their sin's going to infect you. Listen, I got some bad news for you. You're already infected. <laughs> you're already a sinner. And so we have the cure. So, so don't be weird around these people. Just be friendly. Be kind. Invite them into your class and part of your fellowship. Don't be weird. And last, be honest. Finally, we want to say speak the truth in love. Our, our goal here is not to uh, affirm someone's sinful lifestyle. Remember what Jesus said to the woman at the well? He said, uh, you've heard about the Messiah. I who speak to you am he. And then he told this woman something. He said, go and sin no more. Something about the way Jesus interacted with this woman made her feel extremely loved. And at the same time, Jesus told the truth to her. So our goal is not to be offensive in the way we care about people, but our goal is to uh, let the message speak. Let Jesus speak. Leave the difficult um, problem of sharing a hard truth on Jesus. Share the scripture with them. Say, hey, this is what the Bible says, because here's the truth. If they're a sinner, they need Jesus. That's why they're there. They're searching. You found Jesus. You too were once lost, and somebody was kind to you. Somebody wasn't weird. Somebody wasn't shocked. Someone was interested, and they told you the truth in love. Listen, people need Jesus, and it's our goal in these Bible fellowship classes to give them Jesus. So expect them to come. Be ready. They might come this Sunday. Are you ready for them? Hey, I want to tell you one other thing as uh, we close this video. Um, some of you are looking for opportunities to disciple one another, to reach and raise the next generation, to live out God's truth. There is an opportunity in our sports ministry. Uh, Brother Andrew Sutherland uh, wanted to let all of you know that you have an opportunity to, uh, to coach as a coach or to be a referee in our sports ministry. And we have so many people that come to this ministry that aren't part of Blackshear Place, that don't know Jesus. It'd be a great opportunity for you to serve. I'm going to put his email uh, in, in this email I'm sending out to you guys in this link. 